Rock and Roll Shinsu Chu, episode number 50. Let them be rock! All right. So, good deal. All right, guys. Well, you come a long way, baby. It doesn't feel like an episode over 37. It it's... doesn't. <laughs> Not so much. Uh, well, congrats, guys. Um, uh, the feelings are mutual. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and start right off with uh, some news that, if I'm not mistaken, guys, has yet to be officially confirmed, but major news outlets are reporting. They're helping substantiate this, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I mean, nobody – a press release hasn't happened yet or anything. Yeah. But, but, like, you know, major Billboard, Rolling Stone, all those news outlets are talking about it. Everybody's talking about it, that – Axl Rose is going to fill in for Brian Johnson on ACDC's remaining tour dates. I went to the website today, ACDC's website. looks like they've got about 12 or so dates left, uh, some uh, in the States, some overseas. And actually, the first one is Tuesday night. Oh, shit. Like, it's, I didn't know how soon it was. You know what I mean? Uh. I didn't even, I, quite frankly, I didn't even know they were still on tour until I heard this announcement. Um their last show was actually in Kansas City, Jonathan. Oh, yeah. Right. What might be Brian Johnson's last show with ACDC? Yeah. It's in Kansas City on yeah. February 28th. And right? that was a suddenly rescheduled show because of a, a death in the ACDC family where they, they switched the show from, like, Sunday night to Tuesday night at the last minute or something like that. Okay. Uh, so that's, like, a weird thing to do, to oh, yeah. switch the night to just be a couple of nights later or one night right. later. Right. Yeah. I guess when's the last night of the tour... You know, they can do that. Unless, yeah, unless yeah. these dates that are um, coming up this week are rescheduled, too. I, I don't know. Oh, you know what? You know what? Actually, I think they moved it up a day, mm. and which would throw a lot of people off. Because like, yeah, they had to get uh, back to, uh, to Australia. Right. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, they moved it up a day. That's what happened. That's what's really unusual about that. Hmm. So they're set to play Niagara, Niagara Falls. Wow. Um, well, not not at the water. Awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> like in in the barrels going like, up for the fall. Like a bunch of red lights on the waterfall. <laughs> get gas. Um, but no, they're they're supposed to play the Civic Center or uh, in Niagara on Tuesday night. So, uh, gosh, this is going to happen soon. You know, I mean, this is really. We'll know here in, in like forty eight hours. We'll know what's going on for real. I hope they don't so, announce anything. And you just yeah. wait till somebody walks out yeah. on stage to yeah. see who comes oh, out. I'm sure, yeah, they're trouble. They're, they got to be building the hype, you know, that way. Um, it's crazy to think that ACDC is playing Niagara, New York. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I take that back, guys. It's the first Niagara Center in Buffalo. In uh, Buffalo, okay. Niagara. All right, well, close enough. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They were they were playing some uh, some unique places with the. The thing that I heard that started this all was that Brian Johnson has lost his hearing so right. bad yeah. that a doctor told him that if he continued to finish the tour, he would lose all hearing. Right. Like he wouldn't be, he would be completely deaf. So after so many decades of playing these shows, the doctor finally said, "No more. <laughs> I know you got ten shows. shows to." The doctor's the like the, doc the doctor wasn't aware of their music whatsoever. He's been Brian Johnson's doctor for like thirty years. He's like, "Oh, you guys aren't like an opera band. Oh, shit, this is really loud." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. I mean, he, you know, hearing loss is a big thing with musicians. If you talk to oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, but didn't I, he I refute just, it? Yeah, I haven't. And see, that's just it. There, it, there's hardly any info that you can find really about what actually happened and what went down. But the, the, the resolution of it all is basically the rest of the band was like, quickly, we need to find a singer so we can make this money and finish these dates. Yeah. yeah I, yeah. I assume that, uh, canceling a big tour and ACDC plays big shows, um, is costly, <laughs> you know. Yeah, or maybe I, runs the risk of lawsuits. I, I, I don't. I don't know. know. You'd think oh, yeah. that they'd have insurance policies out on that stuff. I, I would guess. Um, I was looking at the remaining dates here. Big, they're going to play Madison Square Garden on April fourth. Yeah, so big yeah. show there. Oh, and then geez. the rest of the dates, the rest of the dates are are uh, are in Europe. Um, up until like they go, 
they go all the way into June, but oh, it's oh. a big break. You know, are they I mean? doing festivals? Like, um, I, I don't. It, no, it, it, uh, maybe the show in Denmark's a festival. The rest of them look like arenas and oh, okay, arenas and stadiums. Okay. And and I mean they they're big enough where they could. Well, they could play what I haven't done is what I need to do is pull up those dates you're looking at, and then pull up the supposed like future towns that Guns and Roses released a list of. I guess mm-hmm. in the last 24, 48 hours, Kansas Guns City. Roses released a yeah. list of towns. Uh, is it going to be a, where they try to coexist and like Axel will be doing G and R dates while he's kind of doing ACDC dates in between? I don't know. I mean, this is those are such big tours for both of those bands. Oh, yeah. Levi's saying, I mean, they can, you know, they they can fly Axel out the next that. Yeah, day, yeah, you know, no big deal. The thing um, that would be devastating to a lot of fans would be is if you've waited this long for a Guns N' Roses reunion and Axel blows his voice out like ten yeah. shows into covering for ACDC. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah, to singing well, I, songs that you're not used to singing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing ACDC's last date on the books is in Denmark, June 12th, and um, I'm I, I'm I'm guessing that the Guns N' Roses tour that has been teased would would start after that. Yeah, I would think so. Think about the normal timing of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know, middle of June's not that far into summer, so you can still mount a summer tour. You know, I mean. So is is Axel the most logical choice? For, I mean, I, I think he, he's in the register there uh, to Definitely. sing the songs, but and I can't think of anybody better, I guess. And maybe they're just trying to cover their asses by you know turning it into kind of a freak show. Well, I mean, they need a big name, you know. I mean, yeah. I, with all due respect to the guy in Crocus, you know, I don't know necessarily know if 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 he would have generated as much excitement as Axel. Right. Or, uh, ticket sales, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Um, and yeah. yeah. But Levi was talking about, you know, Brian Johnson's hearing loss. But Brian Johnson seems surprised by it all, though. Right. Because I saw like a quote, and I'm paraphrasing a bit here, where he said that, you know, they they dropped my bags off at home, and here I am. You know, like I'm. It, so it sounds like there's. Yeah. Why would he say that? Yeah. Like something's contentious, or there's there's something. Like I said, I think it it came down. Know. I think it came down to money. I Probably. think it came down to the fact yeah. that they realized they couldn't continue the tour with them, and you know, Angus and is he still is he the only original member right now? Cliff Williams on Cliff base. is yeah. So Angus and Cliff are basically like, if we are going to finish this tour, we're going to have to get rid of him quickly and find somebody else. But again, to get back to the doctor's point of view, it's like you've been doing this for so long, <laughs> and you're just and now you're like, no more, right. can't can't yep. do it anymore. These are the twelve shows that'll end your career. Yeah. This, they're. I mean, obviously they've been through a lot throughout their whole career, you know, with Bond dying and and everything like that. Yeah. But they, they've been through a lot just within the last few years. Yeah. So I yeah, mean, with Bill Rudd getting arrested and them having a falling out with him, and then you know Malcolm has dementia. Right. You know, he's he's not doing well at all. Right. I mean, he's he he didn't play on the last tour. Um. So yeah, I mean, they've been through a lot, and maybe I don't know. Maybe Levi's right. Maybe it's just you know they they feel like they've got to ride it out. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I, It'll I be hope interesting. It goes, yeah, I mean, I'm if it's Axel, I'm. I got to admit, I'm. I'm looking forward to the YouTube videos. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was looking, um, Guns N' Roses, on their last tour, maybe the tour before, they do. They would most nights they would cover a whole lot of Rosie or Riff Raff. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, Axel's. Uh, I mean, he can handle the material, you know, and and. I looked at a recent ACDC set list, and, you know, one of my complaints about them is they, I've never seen them live. I, I regret not going when Malcolm and Phil were still on board um, a few years ago, but, uh, you know, they don't really change, they don't change their set list night to night. I mean, the, no. the every tour is, the, 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 you know, if they've got an album to promote, they'll play, you know, they'll, they'll play all, songs off that album. But other than that, the set list doesn't really change. I was looking at the, the set list from Kansas City, and really the only kind of nugget that they threw in was Sin City, really. And I don't, I don't know, that's not necessarily a deep, deep cut, but it's it was kind of yeah. like one of, the, one of the only, like, that and Given the Dog a Bone were, like, the only kind of, like, non e sides, yeah. Yeah, high voltage they played as well. So, But other than, other than that, it was what you'd expect. 
lot yeah. he- heavily on like they basically play like you know three fourths of black and black back in black. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh, yeah, that's a bread and butter, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if I go see ACDC, I want to hear more Bond songs. That's just my preference, you know. Yeah. Um, I'll always be a Bond guy, uh, which I think Brian Johnson's awesome, and it's probably one of the best. Um, lead singer um, replacements ever oh it's one of uh, the best comebacks like in, oh, in yeah in band history for sure and i mean it didn't even take that long you know like no. they didn't, I mean, you know what though levi now that you mentioned the you know them with the money and the touring you know bond died and they didn't take a break they're just like hell with it we're going on oh yeah you know exactly I, like, and uh, that's why I... 79, they had back in black they're like we're ready let's go yeah and that's <laughs> part of me thinks that's just like the that's just them. That's like burned into their heads that it's like, you got to just keep the wheels on the bus moving. And the next town is the next town we're playing. And then the next town after that. And yeah, even though it, like throughout their, throughout the nineties and two thousands, they took pretty significant breaks. Yeah. They had, you know what I mean? Times. Like they, they definitely took some years off. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. There was quite a few uh, years between studio albums. For mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I wish them well. I mean, I'll, I'll I assume it's probably the same set list because they, you know, they've but with Axel. So um, yeah, I, I don't know. I you know, I've kind of warmed up to the news, you know. When I, when I first <laughs> yeah, played, I mean, I was I'm... like, that's weird, but then I was like, you know, that's kind of awesome. Um, I don't like to see Brian get screwed over yeah. if he is, but uh, you know, right on. I mean, Axel singing all those songs, that sounds okay to me. Just don't blow your voice out, Axel. We want to see you on the Guns Tour. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, good luck, boys. Whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever form they take. So, anywho. All right. Um, moving on to uh, our next topic. Uh, also, uh, earlier this week, Lollapalooza announced its uh, lineup for 2016 here in Chicago at Grant Park, same place it's been for about the last uh, 11 years or so now. Uh, The lineup is kind of, you know, sort of, I don't know, maybe Lollapalooza lineups have become predictable at this point. I guess they have. Um, But Radiohead's going to headline, as well as the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Lana Del Rey, and uh, there's a couple others in here. I'm sorry, I don't have the, the lineup in front of me. I'll pull it up in a second. Uh, LCD Sound System. LCD Sound System, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jane's Addiction. Jane's Addiction, right. And um, it just got me thinking, um, you know, maybe to coincide with our 50th episode. This is actually Lala's 25th anniversary this year. Not 25th tour or... No, uh, but yeah, they had a lot of missing years. They, in there, they took but, some yeah. breaks, but yeah. Lollapalooza, the first Lollapalooza was in 1991. Mm-hmm. So yeah, 25 years ago. And I was looking at previous lineups and, um, you know, obviously the advent of Lollapalooza was really a, a kind of a game changer for, for, for touring. Um, you know, it, it, you can maybe, I know some people have complained that it's gotten kind of stale. Jim D. Regattas being one of those people. Um, yeah. Can we talk about his piece real quick? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the well, idea. Give everybody a little bit of context. Yeah. Go ahead. Jim D. Regattas, who's, um, one of the co-hosts of sound opinions on, on public radio, uh, WBEZ in Chicago, here in Chicago. Um, he wrote for the Sun Times for a number of years and he's a music critic and he's always been very opinionated, um, at least rec- in recent years of Lollapalooza, pretty critical of it, just saying that it's become too corporate and too predictable and stale, and and um, he just really doesn't like it. And I read his – he, as Jonathan mentioned, he wrote a piece on WBEZ's a blog he keeps on WBEZ um, – just essentially just bitching about Lollapalooza, um, saying that it's lost any integrity it once had, and he called it the Walmart by the lake. Um, you know, as I get older, I try to be less cynical. I thought it just sounded like a really grumpy, get-off-my-lawn type of response yeah. to, to the lineup. Totally. Know? Like, elitist and, oh, how are, what are... Uh, us music critics supposed to do during the summer what shows are we supposed to review if we don't want to review these festivals like oh sorry it's not really for you 
Yeah. Levi, did you get a chance to read it by any I chance? did, and I'm, I'm totally biased on this because I read Jim's book about Lester Bangs. Oh, yeah. He wrote okay. an excellent book on Lester Bangs. He's a good Bangs. writer. He's a, he's a, he's and, a very um, good writer. I kind of agree with him, but I've been a, a grumpy old man since I was like four years old. <laughs> like, I'm, the, I'm, I'm Benjamin Buttons, man. I was born grumpy and old. I, I Everybody, see you it. can find Levi at 4.30 p.m. at Denny's every day. Okay? <laughs> no, well, hey, it could be Perkins or Village Inn, okay? <laughs> so, I just... Part of, me, part of me sees it both ways, you know? The yeah. young person in me sees that, yeah, it's... It's about music and it's about having fun and but part of me is old and thinks it's become just like a ritual for kind of uh, it's like rich teenage kids in Chicago to like go to every summer. It's like summer camp for for hipster kids in Chicago. Yeah. And I in looking at all the set lists, I I didn't realize in 2004 um, that they they didn't have a tour. They like were lined up to have a tour. Yeah, and they have all the bands listed, and all those bands look like they would make for a really good like tour today. Like they would. the eclectic bunch. Wilco, yeah. Flaming Lips, Gomez. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, wow, how did that not go over? And yeah. so yeah. I didn't realize though, but yeah, it's on its eleventh year in Chicago now. Um, yeah, they've you know the, ever since that year that Levi had mentioned that it had been canceled in 04 when it was supposed to, they were supposed to bring it back as a touring uh, like it was in the nineties. Um, ever since 2005, the following year uh, it's, it's, it's been a three day week. It's been a weekend festival in Chicago. Um, usually every, every year I've been, it's usually been about a hundred degrees too. Cause it's usually right around the first weekend in August. Um, yeah. You know, but, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. All right. Um, you know, doing it, going, you said going on 11 years now, it's gotten to the point where they're going to be recycling headliners. They have to. There's only so many bands that can headline something like that. And yeah, they've done everybody, they've had, they've brought in everybody, and it's become predictable in that it's wide ranging and, uh, and, and the unpredictability is what is predictable, and you can't really be surprised by anybody anymore. <laughs> Uh, with it and at this point i think it's just promoters doing their best to get this generation of 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 millennials to actually pay for music because they don't pay for any other type of music so it's like their only chance to get their money and i don't blame them i think for a lot of these you know beast B stage bands this is probably the biggest gig that they have all year it's their best chance at expanding their audience yeah and uh you know if you're bored with who's on the main stage then don't go to the main stage yeah. You know, and also um, a, a couple Jim DeRogatis didn't mention this necessarily in his his piece, um, but I, I was reading a few of the Facebook comments that people had left about the piece and a couple of the complaints I saw multiple times. I don't think have merit like for one. And Jonathan just alluded to this. A lot of the lineup still is relatively small bands. Yeah, and I mean, that, if you look yeah. at it, that's like, I mean, like I look at the lineup and I haven't heard of half the bands, yeah. you yeah. know, and I, oh, I consider yeah. the three of us people that follow music a little more than the average Joe walking down the street, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I haven't heard of half the bands on yeah. there. Oh, yeah. So you can't necessarily say that those bands don't have a voice or, you know, don't have a place to play in this thing. And also, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Radiohead. Um, you know, those, those, those are bands that two of the, the, all three of us grew up listening to, you know, I mean, those, yeah. the, the 21 year old that Jim DeRogata seems to be complaining about, um, I wouldn't say that person is clamoring to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I could be wrong. This is true. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know? I, well, it's four guys like Jim. <laughs> I, part of that is now the recycling and the reselling of our generation's music to the younger millennial crowd. Sure, and sure. that's happening in droves right now. Sure. Yeah. And why not? Anything from the nineties <laughs> now is, is a hot commodity. And I, and you know, I mean, it, to take it to another point, to put on something like this, you have to have corporate sponsors that are huge. You do. If you, if yeah. you look at the bottom mm -hmm. of the, the list of bands, all those corporate logos at the bottom of that are giant corporations. And if you're going to have to put on a festival, it's not like, like a Bill Graham could walk in and put on something like no. this. 
Yeah, I, I, I and Levi, I maybe you're saying the same thing here. I, I thought his bitching about the corporate of it was, I mean, that ship sailed. Jim. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, you yeah. Know, man. Seriously, like, like go to Bonnaroo, this note's for you, Jim. Anywhere, like, you know, go to you know, <laughs> yeah. a blue, go to a bluegrass festival and they've got corporate sponsorship. I mean, like, that's just. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. the times we live in. And you know what? The tickets would probably be about twice as much as they already are if you didn't have all that. So. Yeah, like I said, you wouldn't. They would, there's no promoter that could put on a show this big yeah. by themselves. Absolutely not. So I, I found some of his bitching about, well, yeah, who, you know, who likes to see logos plastered everywhere? I don't, and I'm sure you guys don't either, but I've just accepted it. You right. know, it's just. Exactly. I, it's just it's just comes with the territory. This is Lollapalooza. This isn't this isn't some one of the, the gripes, festival, you know. One of the, I think one of the gripes that he has that he's not mentioning is the fact that for a music critic like himself nowadays, it is so hard to find what to critique at a festival like that because, like you said, you've never heard of over half of the bands. They a lot. They've made it difficult to find. I don't know how to explain well, it. That's what, that's like, the, the cream rises that to the top. diamond in the rough kind of Yeah, the thing. cream rises to the top. And it used to be the record companies, either you you saw the cream because they were putting money behind it or the, they had the talent to where the record company put out their record and it was amazing off the wall. Well, now it's so hard to find who is the cream of the crop. Well, that's that where I, music I, critics got to earn his money and do some homework. Right? right? <laughs> Oh, and that's I think that's one of the things he's having an issue with that he's not mentioning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious I, to see how he would fix it, too. You know, he didn't get to that. Like, how? Would, right. Like, yeah. What, what, what do would you the do? ideal festival look like, you know, without having bands that no one's without having bands that, you know, that no one's heard of? I mean, right? no one's yeah. going to come if no that's one's a good heard question. of bands. Yeah. I interrupted you, though, I think. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That was um, uh, to my point. So. Yeah, but you know, I did. You guys ever go to the original Lollapalooza? I never. I never Touring. saw the version. I, I think I was gonna go to maybe like ninety five or something with some friends from school, and it fell through. Like somebody's car wouldn't work because we were gonna drive down and just like try and get tickets mm-hmm. at Riverport. Yeah. In St. Louis? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. 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 It was an annual stop, you know, at Riverport. Every- right. Yeah, you know, uh, for us, the 1992 represents the apex of all of them. Oh, yeah. I think it's the quintessential one, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) right. And I realized that for some people, they could could give two shits less about that lineup. (laughs) You show that lineup to a 21-year-old, they're going to be like, whatever, you know. (laughs) Like, you're so DJs? Half of them are probably going to go to some club downtown rather than watch Radiohead or the Chili Peppers, you know? I mean. It's true. (laughs) I mean, and, and that's, you know what? That's okay, because this, it's a different experience for them. You know, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I, I might think I'm cooler some days, you know, or we're cooler, but like, it's a different time. It's yeah. a different. It, it's, you know, that, that's that's okay. You know, they yep. can they can have their thing. I already had my time in the sun. You know, I mean, <laughs> um, and and like I said, you know, you still have two veteran bands, two bands that have been around for. You know, one of Chili Peppers has been around for 30 years. Radiohead almost as long. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're they're still atop the thing. So. Yeah, yeah, it, it's um, but you know what they were able to do throughout uh throughout the 90s. It's interesting how it evolves, and then you see it kind of devolve all of a sudden, where it got like really hard rock there at the end. Yeah, like where like Corn was playing it and stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and and it was like yeah, it was just a lot of hard rock stuff. But yeah. It, there were some years there where um, even the 94 with the pumpkins and beastie boys, the breeders, yeah. tribe called quest, Nick cave, mm-hmm. flaming lips on the B stage. They were ahead of their time. Yeah. It yeah. Being yeah. For Absolutely. Sure. So the, the crows, the crows even played the B stage in 94. I, they played just in Atlanta, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I don't think – because, I mean, the Crows were big enough that they wouldn't have been needed to be on the B stage. That's what I wondered. Yeah, I, I, I think that was just one gig in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, I think it was just like a special thing in Atlanta. So. Um, and that was an interesting one because uh, that was that was the year that, that Cobain died. And... Uh, um, so I guess Courtney Love made some guest appearances through that one. And Nirvana that. was supposed to headline that That's year. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They had been. Does, I think everything was everything was lined up. Does Perry Farrell still have a stake in it? 
a little bit. I think so. Yeah. I, yeah when I yeah. when I went uh, a few years ago, Jonathan, you were there when mm-hmm. in '07 when Pearl Jam and My Morning Jacket. It's the only one I've ever been to. Yeah. Um, he like came out. And yeah. Right. Did MC yeah. something. Like yeah. he got out of his pool yeah. of money backstage to make an appearance on the <laughs> stage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I leave. I I don't know to what degree, but he's still around. You know, I mean, he. I, I don't think like he, you know, he's really like that as heavily involved as he probably was in the '90s, but he's he's still he's still attached to it. Yeah, um, yeah I was super surprised to find out in '96 that Waylon Jennings uh, was on there, and yeah. I, I, I just found some uh, I found a, a piece or two uh, about him talking about it before the tour. I couldn't find anything after the tour, but Waylon Waylon before the tour said that you know he'd been listening to a lot of Nine Inch Nails. Uh, lately (laughs) he was digging the grooves i guess Uh, like levi had alluded to i I love some of the early some of the 90s um the eclectic nature of some of those lineups you know the first year you got like body count Susie and the banshees and jane's addiction that's awesome yeah (laughs) and that's a total precursor to what you know you eventually you saw with bonnaroo absolutely you know yeah it's but they're like, hell with it, we'll book Lionel Richie, you know, sure. Well, yeah, right. it's, so th- <laughs> this kind of transitioned us into the, why did they, Why did it stop? Why did the traveling, yeah. touring mega festival stop? It, did it come down with the amphitheater? Like, did people just get tired of amphitheaters? I think so, maybe a little bit. And just to, as someone who has worked in the industry, I can't imagine trying to get 80 or how, what, like 40 bands or something. Yeah, that's a lot bands. to move from town to town. Well, and yeah, and just the logistics. If if this band goes on five minutes late, that means the setup for that band is going to be another ten or twenty minutes late because they're going to go over. And you're playing and then you're going to find. Yeah, oh uh, yeah, mm-hmm. dude. I I can imagine it was a logistical nightmare. It would be neat to have some like documentary footage of those. Early oh my god, it would be great. Yeah, yeah. To I see mean, how they be a documentary them. about it. Uh, yeah. I mean, because it's even almost to the point where it's romantic to think of all of these bands, you know, traveling together across the country. Granted, you know, they're probably, you know, all in their own buses. Well, but there were, there were times when the bands did not like each other. There was a right. tour, one of the years that had Cypress Hill and House of Pain, and I know those two bands hate each other. <laughs> so it was like, I, how was that every show? Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff to, to totally document. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it really... And this is, I don't really listen to the bands on it, um, but like the Warp Tour is really kind of like the only thing like that still standing. Yeah, and, and it's mm-hmm. scaled way back compared yeah, to right. how it was. Right, and then there's like a metal one called like Mayhem, but like those ones that you had in the 90s, Lala, Horde, um, Ozfest even, you know, all those all those fell under, you know? I mean, they all, yeah. for various reasons, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, right. I I think it's uh, I, I think the way it currently is is how it's going to be for a long time. It's worked in Europe for decades under yeah. this approach, and uh, I think that's the way it'll be here. And it's cool. I'm uh, Levi, like you said, get off my lawn. I'm not going to go to them, uh, <laughs> but I don't I, I don't mind uh, tuning in uh, over the web the day that it's uh, might be going on in the middle of the summer. It's kind of fun to do that. And, and, oh yeah, uh, well, and that's <laughs> that's me. That's that's us getting older. We yeah. don't even want to be there, but we kind of want to be there. Yeah. So, like, sell me the experience in high definition and let me sit on my couch and, like, eat whatever food I want. <laughs> yeah. You right. Know? Right. That's the thing. Yeah, you don't have to pay, you don't have to pay $9 for a hot dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, or $9 for a lukewarm Bud Light. Yeah, no, I, I uh, if they stream it, I'm, I, I'd like to see Radiohead, you know, so. Sure. All right. Well, last point, guys. Um chewing tobacco and you guys told me Lala? I, I didn't I, right yeah <laughs> red man is one of the sponsors um, well, no, so yeah none of the young hipsters are going to be able to pull out their uh their school oh this is true because it's, it's banned in chicago because it is banned now and it, along with all the players for the white Sox and chicago cubs they will not be allowed to do it in you know i don't know at like, the stadium you know, yeah, basically in front of public, I would assume. Like, because I mean, you, they're still probably going to chew it in the clubhouse. You, would you might think. be able to dip between innings when you're in. The uh, yeah, well, yeah, you're going to have guys like going in the tunnel to like sneak dips and stuff. And yeah, 
I don't know how prevalent is it. Did any of the articles that you guys read about the band say like well, what percentage of players still chew? It's mm-hmm. obviously lower than what it used to be, but Miguel because Montero is banned in the minors. Cubs, he he was like it, as soon as it was announced, he was like, "Oh no, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'm going to be forced to quit." Like. I guess if I do it cold turkey, I'm going to be a dick for a while. Like he said all this stuff in like interviews. And I'm paraphrasing, but you know. Sure. Well, I, I never have another Lenny Dykstra. Come on. Right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I agree they shouldn't be doing it in front of little kids on the sure. field. And, you know, especially if it's a game that's supposed to be geared towards bringing a family to the stadium and stuff like that. Um, yeah. We we said before the show, you know, there's they don't do it in any other sport. You yeah. don't see basketball players yeah, it's like not accepted. That, that would be a little odd to see like Kobe Bryant. Which yeah, it's like Lakers not. all on the bench with like big, big chill cups, like just spitting. <laughs> <on them. Yeah. laughs> baseball, baseball's a little, uh, a little, a little nineteenth century in some regards. Yeah. Still. in many regards, yes. In many regards, yeah, yeah, yeah I. No, I think it's just a matter of time. It's just one of those things that we've taken for granted for so long that it's finally been up to the cities. Baseball should have done it a lot. Baseball did do it with minor leagues uh, already, but they, they should have done this in the majors a long time ago That before these cities had to take action or just took action, yeah. uh, not had to take action. So, well, yeah, these a, players should have seen it coming. It's only certain cities. So, like, you wonder if guys are going to be like, ah, oh, they'll have, like, a little – card in their wallets like towns i can dip in towns i can miguel's gonna be like fucking trade me already will you (laughs) (laughs) no trade lists are all smokeless tobacco banned cities one of the things that i heard that and this was on a show um i was watching a little documentary about ferguson jenkins that was produced by canadian broadcast television Mm because he's canadian and one of the things he was talking and this is in 1973 i think it was the guys would mix their bubble gum with oh. the tobacco yeah. because they didn't like the taste of the tobacco. And I was like, that's even more gross than just the tobacco. <laughs> yeah, oh. I was like, oh, my God. Man. Oh, oh man. Yeah, good riddance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, we'll, see, we'll see how that plays out next yeah. Tuesday as well. <laughs> Yeah, right, huh? Yeah. First of all, yeah, hey, our next episode, folks, we're going to be making predictions. So look forward to that. Uh, We're going to be baseball starts very soon. We are winding down what seems to be like an infinite number of spring training games. Uh, So we're finally those are finally we're going to kick those to the curb and start playing some real meaningful baseball soon. We all look forward to that. You can learn more about rock and roll Shinsu Chu uh, at Rock Chu. Dot com. That's rockchew.com. You can find previous episodes and all kinds of other fun stuff about baseball and rock and roll. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at rockinchew. That's rock as in T-N-T. Oi. Um, you can find us there uh, at rockinchew on Twitter and Instagram. And also please like us on Facebook and tell all of your friends. And we will see you next time. So, uh, until episode number 51, we'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Good night. Good night. Peace.